Okay, so hello and welcome to a brand new video. Today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be updating the software on my Tesla Model Y. There is a brand new user interface for the display. And this user interface is going to be somewhat similar to the Tesla Cybertruck. And it's now available for majority of the Teslas. If you haven't received your software update, do check it. It might be available because I've seen pretty much everyone receive it. And I also have received it. So what I'm going to do is because I live in an apartment, my garage does not have internet connection. So I need to do a hack. And the hack is have my phone hotspot enabled and connect my Tesla to the hotspot so that it can access the internet and then I download the software update to my Tesla and then schedule the install so that is what we're gonna be doing in this video and we're gonna briefly go through the release notes to see what else is included so connecting to the hotspot is very simple I just enable hotspot on my phone and then I go to my car and then I click on the LTE bar right here and you should be able to see your network pop up it's Galaxy S24 Ultra it's right here and hopefully my car should recognize it and connect it automatically which it did as you can see by the green tick here and the icon here and then you can see the yellow arrow here so i click on this and as you can see the 2024.14.3 is now being downloaded and this release notes we can read here so it brings in the audible and it says you can pause and read it yourself but just to read this out loud it says listen to thousands of audible original audiobooks so if you are someone with subscription to audible now you can read your audiobooks whilst you drive and the major update comes with the 2024.14 which is the visual updates and this is the major overhaul so currently as you can see how it appears here is you have the map on the majority side of the screen and then you have your car interface on the right side but now with this new release what's going to happen is the visual update is that similar to how the tesla cybertruck is it's going to have the main display it's going to have it appearing like this so your car interface is going to be taking the majority of the screen and your maps is going to be somewhere around the corner i think for australia it's going to be on the left side corner but i could be wrong but we can check that after it's been updated but here's like a little bit more detail so it says user interface v12 elevates your visual experience with the following updates immersive full screen vehicle controls when you're parked large playback controls and quick access to recent favorites and up next in the media player expandable autopilot driving visualizations with a smaller map in the corner for trip guidance which is quite good and i really like this this ui definitely needed an overhaul and it's been a long time coming and there are more updates here so if you are a spotify user then you can now do Spotify Q and playback speed. So you can now sync your Spotify Q across vehicles and devices and adjust your playback speed. So that's quite good if you use Spotify. I personally use Apple Music and Tidal. And if we go to preview of sentry mode recordings, then we can see when sentry mode triggers your vehicle alarm and records an event, you can immediately preview a brief clip of the recording on your phone. So this was non-existent in the past releases. So this is actually good from safety and privacy concerns because when you're away from your car and if someone is like tampering with your car or if something happens with your car and the alarm goes off you get a notification on your phone and when you click on that notification it's going to be playing a video clip of what's happening there's also called something called speed camera chimes so before what they did was they introduced in the software the icon for where the speed cameras are but now as you approach those icons you're going to hear a chime so that you are alerted before you actually pass that speed camera zone so if you want to enable this what you have to do is turn on navigation and then speed camera chime in your vehicle settings but you must have online routing turned on and the main thing is that this requires premium connectivity so it costs about like 9.99 australian dollars per month to have that without that the speed camera chime is not going to work there's also average speed zone so when you click here when driving through an average speed zone you now see your average speed in the zone and the distance to the end of it you must have navigation online routing turned on and requires premium connectivity so this also is only going to work if you have subscription of the premium connectivity from personal experience i have to say that having premium connectivity has been far better than not having it now there's trip progress bar so if we look at the trip progress bar below the turn by turn list in your navigation you'll now see a progress bar that changes as you drive closer to your destinations or next stop so it's going to look something like this which is quite good visually because then you can see how far you're from your destination there's also something called adaptive high beams and this is quite good actually i saw a couple of clips online and it looked very good and i don't know how it does it but it looks good you can check some of the videos on youtube that's already posted but what this basically does is when you're driving at night and say when someone is approaching from the other direction and in your car the light settings you've turned on the adaptive high beams what's going to happen is it's going to dim the lights for the portion that's going to impact the rider coming from the other side so that's quite good the next one is better route available so it says navigation now shows you at the top of your turn list if a faster route becomes available it will reroute unless you decline before the option expires to choose how often you see this suggestion adjust the number of minutes saved in your vehicle settings go to navigation online routing reroute to save to use the 
this feature, you must have online routing turned on. So this is quite good. You can make use of this functionality without the need of premium connectivity subscription. The next one is wiper control. So what we can see here is scroll wheel. When you press the wiper buttons to view wiper controls, you can now adjust the wiper speed by moving the left scroll wheel up or down. Wiper buttons, when you have the wiper set to one, two, three, or four, you can press the wiper buttons to cycle through the speeds. This is going to be quite handy, especially when you're using autopilot. Sometimes the wipers are way out of control, so you can control them in a much more easier manner than before. The next one is security improvements. So it just says that this updates includes important security fixes and improvements. That's good to know. And in the other updates, there's some general fixes and enhancements that they've done. So when you're parked, you can expand the browser to full screen. That's good to know. You can now swipe to delete your sentry mode recordings in the dash cam app on your vehicle touchscreen or at security sentry mode alarm previews in the Tesla app 4.32.0 and above. When you have valet mode on and your vehicle is unlocked or shifted out of park, you will receive a notification on your phone. That's good. The Vampire Survivor games in the arcade now has space 54 and deplorable updates. Arcade includes the latest game update for Polytopia Path of the Ocean. So that's good to know. And I guess that's basically all the software updates and hopefully I should be done by now. So looking here, it's actually at its final stages of downloading this. Okay, the software has been downloaded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit the car and then I'm going to install this and then I'm going to go to some grocery shopping. And after the grocery shopping is done, this should be all completed because now that it's downloaded, it doesn't need the internet. That's a really good thing about Tesla. I don't know if other EVs function the same way because I do not have much experience with other EVs, but at least with the Teslas, like this is one of the most amazing features that once it's downloaded, you can schedule for any time and you don't need to be anywhere near the car for it to install the downloaded software you can do it remotely you can do it whilst you're inside the car obviously you cannot drive when the software update is happening but you have a lot of control when it comes to updating the downloaded software so yeah that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna head out do my grocery shopping and then we can look at the ui how it looks after it's been installed so just for visuals this is how the current ui looks so the map on here and the car interface here and the controls are here so this is how it looks and when i come back it should be completely different Different. Okay, I'm back from my grocery shopping. Now let's see the new user interface of my Model Y. Okay, I can see some updates here, but let's see if I scroll down here. Okay, look at this. This is amazing. Oh my god, this is so good. This literally is taking the concept of the user interface from the Tesla Cybertruck. This looks amazing. We have our media player here. If you want to navigate somewhere, you can type in here by clicking on this navigate right here. And as I said before as well, the map is right here on the top left corner. And if you want to enlarge the map, what you can do is you can drag it like this and you'll have a similar format prior to the update. But if you just slide this like this, then you have your car as the main display and you can interact with opening the front by just pressing on it and you can also do the same for the trunk and what i heard about you know opening the trunk by clicking on it is basically if you click and as the trunk is opening you can hit the pause the display shows like once you hit it opens and the trunk is opening it turns into pause button and you can click on the pause button to stop the trunk midway so that's quite amazing okay i see a blue dot here as well let's see what that is about so i think there is light so this is basically saying that you know like the updates or the changes that came in happened in these areas so let's click on the lights and let's scroll here ambient lights steering wheel okay everything is auto adaptive high beam that's new it's turned on by default you can turn it off but i'm gonna leave it on i want to see what's driving in the night because i'm going to my friend's house tonight and then when i drive back home i want to see how it interacts how it works and if i go to navigation as well there's speed camera chime i'm gonna turn that on and it says online routing finds optimal route based on traffic condition as well you can reduce the reroute to save the time by a couple of minutes by default it's five but you can make it three you can make it four you can make it two i'm gonna leave this as is i just connected my tesla to the hotspot as well and as you can see now the wi-fi icon is in the center before it was on the top left corner so that's also a change so even after the update i saw the yellow download arrow so i went to the software and it says game update available so it's currently downloading a game update i don't ever play games on my tesla but i'm still gonna download loaded because it is a software update and it's actually done now so there was a blue dot here as well i clicked on it and it was related to the spotify update that was in the release okay so that's been it for this video i just wanted to perform the software update for my tesla model y this brand new ui looks amazing i guess i'll leave it right here thank you for watching this video this far i'll definitely see you in the next one till then bye